Welcome everybody to the Monday, November 6th meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, the meeting is being videotaped. <laughs> call the meeting to order. Um, first item, minutes for vote to approve the minutes of October 23rd. Run them over, they look good. I vote to approve the minutes. Make a motion to second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So before the warrant, since we have um, Lee and George from the assessor's office here, um, it's okay, we'll just skip to their item, which is in new business um, to discuss and devote on signing the contract for a new assessing software. So you want to tell us why, I'm what, sure. what and why? Well, um, as you know, at the, the annual town meeting, money was set aside for us to change over to a new valuation system which is the Patriot Catalyst System AP5 is the valuation program. And so the money is all set there. And this is simply a matter of formalizing the contract, which uh, is the basis for the amount of money that we had set aside and everything. Uh, that included our time. It included you know, a number of other things. The contract itself is for $10,500 and one year subscription fees of the software and the hosting uh, amount to 5,240. The, the hosting is based on the number of parcels we have. And as Roy Cohen said, that is significantly less expensive than us trying to upgrade to a network and everything else over here on this side of the road. Um, it would have cost several times that to do it and to you know keep going every year. So he recommended very, very strongly that we take their hosting package as well. And so we have a final contract. It simply needs to be signed. And because it was over $10,000, we thought we'd just uh, confer with you. But um, I think we have the authorization to sign it. But, but I wanted to see if you had any other questions. What, what was the amount set aside at town meeting? 26,000. And so um, the balance is going to be applied to future years or? No, labor, primarily, because the conversion involves a complete double check of all of the information that goes from one system to the other. You have to do it card by card, plus a visual reinspection of the town, a, a drive by type of inspection, but to make sure that we have all the buildings on the cars, this type of thing. So it's a data control data quality issue. So there are reports that need to be sent to the state that don't need to be done in a standard year. And there's quite a bit involved. So this is extra work that would not normally be done in the course of ordinary business. Exactly. And so so who would this labor be hiring? Well, me, George has already come in on some of the conversion double checking. We're working on double checking our data right now. Yes. <laughs> and then we... Uh, Hope to have any candidates for the administrative assessor, the you know, final candidate, able to come in on this too. Especially when we get down to the training portion. And then, how how long would this is this software going to last? Like how, how long is this? this price? Well, no. How oh. long is this? How, how long did the previous software last? How many years? Oh, four. Four. It was never meant, originally it was never meant to be. It was adapted from someplace else to be used in Massachusetts. It was not done, adapted as fully as it could have been. And the technicians, or do not know assessing those who help when you call in. Don't know assessing. It's been a battle. Isn't that, I can't remember, but wasn't that the recommendation of the state to use that software? It was. And they had a committee whom they set up to help create it. And it just, of the 72, I think 71 or two towns that were eligible in the first place for it. About 60 actually signed on and they're now down to about 30, 30 have left. 
and I assume they're not going to help. No, recover the cost of getting new software. No, and the conversion. They were very generous in their help the other time. And the conversion installation and training. It says the conversion is four years of data. Does that mean four years of prior prior data? Yes. Okay. And then just want to state, I'm sure you know, in the general notes, it says that the reoccurring fees will increase at 5%. 5% per year. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep, saw that. It seems to be pretty much standard in the industry right now. Yeah. But this is, this is the old Patriot program that's been purchased by a different company. Oh, Catalyst is a nationwide firm who specializes in valuations, and um, they bought up Patriot because it was a good program. Patriot's been in Massachusetts for over 40 years, well tested, beaten into shape decades ago, and able to uh, handle what comes along normally. Um, sorry. And the problems with Tyler are a large part of why we're still struggling to get the bills out. I am. Yeah, how's that going? Slowly. The we actually we had our consultant look at it too, and he said this morning he said I think it's a QDS problem. This afternoon he says no, it's a Tyler problem. And the two of them each say it's the other one's problem, and we're stuck in the middle trying to keep digging deeper and deeper as best we can to find out where the value differences are. There's one set of data in the valuation program. If you pull the consolidated report, the LA4, which shows how many parcels are single family homes and what's the total value of them. And how many parcels are chapter 61s and what's the total value of them? Consolidated report. You get a beautiful set of figures. Then you try and ask it to pull an extract, which lists each figure, each account individually, and the total amounts come out differently. So That's the billing company says, we can't use this, it doesn't match the LA4. This Sounds pretty terrifying. It is. It's, it's infuriating. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? I'm hoping. That's not a train coming at you? Yeah. <laughs> well, what? <but. laughs> no, we're going higher up in the Tyler company. Supposedly, QDS, the billing company, sent in their specs to the valuation company, who then wrote the extract. But this is where you say, oh, no, it's the other one's fault. Oh, no, it's the other one's fault. So we keep digging and we keep working with them and uh, trying to find what's buried underneath. That explains why your car's been here all these weekends. These uh -huh. weekends. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Part of the job. So, so we look forward to transferring to a new program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we still will have to, you know, deal with this one to get this year's bills out. But for next year, we'll have a new program in place. And then the cost going forward for next year, is it going to just be this another 5,000 plus 5%, whatever? That's yes. The valuation program, we have a second SPED piece to it that's, that's coming in. But um, yes. It would be the annual subscription. Yeah, I mean, I know we've been talking about this for a while, and I know, I know Tyler is not so good. Thank you, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, it was well intentioned. They did pick up a lot of the costs they didn't have, yeah. which we thought was very helpful and generous at the time. Yeah, it just didn't work out that way. Just a. a Sorry, I can't remember, Paul, can, how much is the software annually now with Tyler compared to what it will be? I just don't remember. Uh, this year is 4,600. That's not bad. Not substantially, no. 
until that five percent of your keeps that well right so we're looking at another six or seven hundred for FY25, maybe eight hundred five percent on top of what was already in the budget. That five percent is only if it's greater than the consumer price index increase for that year. They take whatever is yes. higher. There's no yeah, they have an interesting little formula in there. Yeah. So I think basically we would like to have your uh, we wanted to have your input to give you a chance to ask more questions and uh, would you prefer that we sign it and you initial it or all the way around, whatever we would like to do? You, this was really honestly mostly so that you all could ask I understand. questions. Yeah, I understand. so I mean, it certainly seems fine for. I'm just hoping that Tyler works with this company. I saw that their estimate is based on you know, having some, access to their database without. Yes, I've had some good advice on that from a couple of towns that have switched over. And also, Rory Bishop, our consultant, has worked with towns that have switched over. Mm -hmm. And so we won't have to pay a, what do they call it? A, uh, it's, it's coordinating the two systems. He'll, he'll take care of that. Um, Brookfield told me exactly what order in which to request the data and what format in order to speed things along, you know, do it the most efficient way possible. There are probably, At least 35, 40 towns in Western Massachusetts that already use Patriot. Some have for many, many years. So um, I'll move that we accept this contract. Um, whether you want to sign it or we can sign it out okay. here. I don't Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're, you're authorized to sign it. So are we. So <laughs> okay. So, uh, That's good. Well, I think we'll go ahead and sign it then. Um, and uh, I'll second your motion. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, you have the uh, I added it the Okay, but you also are going to have some more. You talked about that earlier, right? Yes. yes. So you have my hand up. She wrote no. six is the one that's that. Okay, good. Number five. The question was that was going to say to be implemented in fiscal. Oh, no. Yeah. Yes, yes. If you have that right, if you're kind of over 16 years of age, you're right. To be implemented in fiscal 25. Go oh, good. Okay. Can you hear us, Erica? Yes, I can hear you now. <laughs> really weird. It just it was all underwater for a second. It's doing it again. Can you hear us now? Yeah, I see two of you on my screen, though. No, it, it, I keep, it 
changed my name and everything. I, whatever. But it says it's report recording, so. No, I can hear now. You're not underwater anymore. It <laughs> All right. The other one just disappeared. Don't ask me what's going on. Okay. So, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, what's been drafted into the, the articles for the special town meeting, article number six, is to see if the town would consider um, taking some money, probably from free cash, to allow us to supplement the new program with the collection tablet. Uh, this is a mobile hardware software combination that can go out in the field. You take all the data right onto the tablet, come back in, it docks with the computer, plugs it right in. It. I hadn't originally thought about doing this, but as we were talking about it a couple of meetings ago, Russ and George both brought up the fact that it will save hours of time and accuracy. There'll be no transcription error. Nothing will be forgotten to be transcribed. It allows the um, property owner to look at their car right then and there, to sign off that yes, they saw it, they, you know, we answered their questions, that kind of thing. It what it does require is a Surface Pro tablet, which is the upper end of performance there. Microsoft it has to be. And so I was looking this afternoon and Amazon has them. Uh, the tablet plus keyboard plus screen protector come up to $2,100 together. The tablet alone is um, there we go. Well, $1,299. So yeah, it's going to be less actually because the keyboard's about 200, the screen protector's about 30. So it'd be less than that. The They had a, happened to have a package there that showed that figure. So if we looked at, say, 1,300 and 250, we're about 1,550, roughly. Um, these are the specs on this particular one. It is apparently very rugged. If we do have to have it already loaded with a an operating system. Best Buy had some available at lower prices that did not have operating systems. So there you would go adding a number of hundreds of dollars in order to do that. Um, this one on, on Amazon had it already loaded. Now, I don't know about the processors. I understand that Intel Evo i7 is supposed to be equivalent to the Microsoft SQ3. But this one happens as it's specced out as the Evo i7. And it comes with, uh, as I say, Windows 11. So the initial cost of the software would be 3500 And then it's 1500 annually. Software just for this device? Yes. Jeez. But the software is more expensive than the device itself? In this case, yes, because it's the whole valuation software. Oh, okay. So it's so is it's licensed per machine? Is that how it works? I think that's pretty much how it is, yes. Okay. So this requires Wi-Fi. This requires a residence to have Wi-Fi. For it to work? No, no, no. It will work fine even if there's no cell service available. Simply stores all the data until you get back to the office. We can dock, or if there is Wi Fi available, it can transmit. It's one license for the one tablet. Yep. We also talked about buying this tablet later after yep. having worked with the yep. software for a while, but then concluded the amount of data work you're doing in the conversion, it probably would make sense to have it now to put it to use during the conversion. When we go around all these different houses and have to check the yep. data. 
because you can load up data into the tablet. You can preload, you know, all of, of on Elm Street and so on and so forth, and then take it out and go, and it's already in there. And you're simply checking as you go uh, while you get your new photos. You know, you could be double checking all the descriptive data, data that you have. Yeah, I had not anticipated getting it initially until we started talking more about it. So I mean, we're not voting on the money articles in the warrant tonight. We're going to be doing that in a joint meeting with the finance committee in maybe two weeks, maybe before then. But um, right. you know, this this was one town special town. Right now, our the town's finances are in such flux. Yes. Um, because we are spending money in deficit every week without a safety net, without knowledge of whether the state is going to be providing the supplemental that. appropriation. And so we might be really broke. We might not be. Um, and certainly, maybe by December, there'll be clarity. Maybe there won't be. Um, maybe by June, there'll be clarity. Maybe there won't be. Um, but there's more likely to be more ch a greater chance of more clarity come June. <laughs> um, and so, you know, that by then we'll be six months into the conversion. What was the number that you wanted to put in this for? Well, I think that based on just the one that I looked at on Amazon and the one at Best Buy, uh, yeah. We probably need to figure two thousand for the unit keyboard, screen protector, docking station, and then it would be another thirty five hundred for the software, and fifteen hundred for the first year's annual cost. So that's seven thousand. I know it's a lot of money. So is there a warranty? On the hardware, yeah, probably for something extra. Is that yes. Microsoft Surface Pro is might be rugged. That might be how they market it, but I know if it drops from this table to this floor, mm -hmm. it will break. It will break. Oh, no, it would be wise to get the warranty. Yes, extended. Yes, the extended warranty. Yes, we could ask for a little bit more and simply to get. Simply these stated items, you know, the the unit, the docking station, the screen protector, the, the uh, keyboard, and warranty, and a warranty, and have enough money to know to cover them and be able to turn a little bit back if it comes in less. I'd love to look for further sources for this same computer, the Service Pro. Well, this is what the schools use. This oh. is what our schools use. Oh, we, have, we have an IT department with four full-time people at Frontier now. And they need four people because they're always fixing Microsoft Surface tablets that fall and break. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and that's all. That's They have they have portable repair kits. Carts. Mm. Oh, interesting. Um, go to each classroom and fix them. Oh, my gosh. But... Um, as like to it. their availability for town repairs, um, yeah, that's no. I think it's I think it's wise to get the extended warranty on this. So on the Microsoft website, there is a refurbished Surface Pro Nine for business for under eight hundred dollars, and it still comes with the warranty. Does it have the uh, operating system? I would assume that it's refurbished. Most of them did not. Windows Eleven. It does have Windows 11. With Windows 11. Ooh. Well, that's a great opportunity right there. Starting from 798.99. What's the um, memory on that? I am not seeing. Maybe you get to choose. As I say, I just uh, looked at the one yeah, today. It's showing, so it shows two options. It mm -hmm. shows a 16 or 32 gigabit, 
uh -huh. or removal at removal SSD, which I would recommend. Yeah. Um, up to a terabyte. Okay. I can email you this. Sure. Perfect. Absolutely. That would take several hundred dollars off right there. Looks like 500. Yeah. Was it another one? I always, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Refer, if, it's, if it's certified, it'll come. Yeah, back. certified refurbished. Yes. I always do refurbished stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I know. I'm with you. Okay, super. That would also probably increase the chances of town meeting saying yes to. Good shopping the, <laughs> is absolutely inviting the board. Yes. And you can stand up and say, we got a bargain. Yes. Like yeah. So that's, I think, all I have to say about that one. Yeah. So it makes sense to do it now if we're going to do it because there's a lot of data entry to do in the next year. We have to review every single property. On four horseback, plus in the office. And uh, Can you get this copy, Ernie? Sure. Okay. Sure. I didn't know if you had spares. Um, I think everybody has one. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to put in 7,000 for now, and we establish that. 6,500. Well, I can come up with a lower figure at town meeting. Right. Yeah, yeah. we don't want to go too low because then we can't. Right. Um, and then we just establish that the board will sign the contract. Okay. All right. So Article Five, the the um, the property tax work off is the, is this the most um so are the the language is is sort of gen is sort of general. It is yes. But within the statute, there are like menu options as to the amounts. Those are determined by the select board. Those are determined by the select board, both the amount that one can earn and the number of spaces to make available. It can be changed every year. You can have an introductory program on a small basis if you'd like and then expand it. It can be uh, somewhat responsive to the number of applications you have. The different departments get to choose from among the applicants to see whom they feel would be the most qualified to work for their particular project. Depending on the project, if it's simply a scanning thing, that's one thing. If it's doing anything, you know, that involved numbers, involved judgment, determination, that's totally different. And someone would, might have experience in that type of thing. But those are determined by the select board. Do you have any thoughts on the subject? Recommendations? I mean, I'd be inclined to start off slow, I think. Start off gently. And have, well, we talked about it briefly today at the finance team meeting, but my thought, my personal thought was perhaps go for a $5,000 total and divide that up as you wish. If it was 10 $500 allowances, someone could work 30 or more hours depending on what you decide will be the hourly recompense. Um, it has to be between the federal and the state minimum wages. So there you have a range of what is it, 825 to $15, something like that. So you need to choose a figure in there as well. But to start off with several, to we need to set up the bookkeeping on this because hours that need to be kept and verified by the department head. The work needs to be verified by the department head. And then it goes to the accountant and Jan, and they have to um, take care of their end of it and report it as let's see, state income, not federal. Oh, all the way around. 
Yeah. It's not considered state income, but it is reported federal income. So these people would get a, a 1099 or something equivalent at the end of the year. So there's that extra paperwork, and Medicare is also withheld from the amount earned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Medicare, Medicare, right. So starting off with a few accounts in the first year might be an easier way to establish the program as far as the background is concerned. Do we have a, a rough idea of how many people in town would be eligible if there was no li limits to the amount of people? Oh, in well, I don't know. The um, income eligibility factor is, okay, low income limit, $63,800 in 2023 for a two person household. Just the gross income? Yes. But there's also an asset requirement, right? No. There is no asset requirement. No assets. Okay. What are the kinds of jobs that people would be doing? I, I mean, because my, I, I mean, I, I feel like there, there could potentially be a training period. <laughs> like you can't just have someone come in and like do a job without. What it is. Yeah, um, I had worked part-time in Sunderland a number of years ago and they had the, had the program for many years. They had things like working on the gardens in front of the town hall. Okay. They had things like uh, helping to escort school groups when they took their walks to the library, you know, be an extra parent there or an extra adult there. They had one woman who was an experienced town treasurer but was retired and came in and assisted the treasurer during heavy, heavy bulk times, like when the taxes came in. So everything from very skilled informed positions to helping to scan things or stuff envelopes. They had people who came in and stuffed envelopes. Okay. It could be what, what a different deter department determines. Help can be done in their department. Because we have 740, something like that, residents that are over 60? Probably, yes. So, I don't know about income, but just that raw number oh. would would seem to me that there's a lot more than 10 that would be eligible and very much desirous of this. Well, another factor is that the amount that they earn has to be offset by the overlay, the overlay. So we need to have a limit set on it so that we can have the overlay appropriately funded for 25 or for each coming year. So that's important too. That's why starting off with a given number or a given total amount is yeah. is very important. Well, we're usually about 30,000 are overlay typically. Well, it's gone up some because we have more applicants now for a couple of the exemptions. Um, the, the personal exemptions, yeah. Personal exemptions run about 30,000 by themselves. Yeah, one can do this in addition to receiving a low income exemption. Uh, and two people in a qualifying household do this. Yeah. So we'll have this handout sheet available. Perhaps we should, if it passes, we'll get this up onto the website immediately. And I think if it does, well, I'm sure between you and I, we'll be researching other towns and their process and yes, and their applications. <laughs> and we'll have to be speaking with all the department heads if it passes and finding out what jobs they may have available yes. and how we do the paperwork and all yep. that. Because you know, to be honest, like this one of when when I really took a look at how little we spend on that those 740 people. Mm -hmm. um, and how the, the amount in our budget every year for Council of Aging has stayed flat at $1,200 for as far back as I could look as fine, mm -hmm. um, which to me is somewhat scandalous um, that it would just, that this is a group of people in town that deserve more. I know there's definitely and, interest out there. And, um, and you know, so I, I mean, I, just like I, I was, I, I was hoping that you would recommend that, that I, I don't know that, that, that you would be a, well, to, you know, twenty or thirty sounds a lot well, better than ten. But 
Maybe you know, it should, and, that's what it should be. And, and there's so many, there are so many needs. And the, you know, the, uh, I'm excited about just a flock of volunteers and um <laughs> and that you know and and just just to do things like call the, you know, the seniors up once a week, mm -hmm. all of them get a phone call, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do? Is there, you know, do you need to give any whatever, just things like that. There's a job right that, there. That like, you know, um. Yeah. But, but, but at the same the phone bank. Yeah. but at the same time that's the perfect example of an organization that is just not currently equipped to manage the volunteers they're just not that's right like that's right and there um, needs to be someone responsible for tracking the hours work the ball you know the, the job was done according to its specifications so, and I'm reluctant to pile more on our on the town administrator but I mm -hmm. see I think in some circumstances, I don't know who else to turn to. Um, well, they, they don't have to decide tonight yeah. how much will be set aside. Uh, that can be done between now and the town meeting. You're taking a vote for the uh, summer night the town meeting? Yes, it's on the warrant. I know that, but I mean, in terms of presentation, oh. the dollar amounts people tend to join in the I would suggest that we have more students available, otherwise, those can save it. Mm -hmm. This requires a simple majority or two thirds. As to the best of my knowledge, it's a simple majority. Yeah. The only two thirds we have is the. I, mean, I, I remember work 30 grand. <laughs> and I, rem I remember this coming up in the past, and I remember just the one resident that led the charge to vote it down. I just remember thinking that it was just so mean and cruel, yeah, the things he said about it. Um, yeah. Um, He's we want to do it right. What's that? I say, if we're going to do it, we want to do it right. Yeah. So well, criticisms and questions are welcome and they help us. So I can suggest, well, there's a criticism suggestion that we don't want that. We're going for a good time. If we have criticism suggestion, that means they're going to table the vote. So we really need to Well, the, the vote is a pretty general all purpose, and the, the residents will not be voting on the amounts and the numbers. That's right. Right. So the, the the vote itself is fairly innocuous. Yeah, you're gonna have like uh, language that you have for any kind of meeting with the warrants. Warrant light. Yeah. Yeah, it started with the warrant light. Yeah. That'll be good because uh, people well, they vote yes and the right I can agree to tens of thousands of dollars of foregone tax credits. That's right. So we should do something to explain in there that it will be a select board vote. Um, but I would say that it makes perfect sense to my mind, and thank you for reminding me to put that on, that we don't start until FY25, because these are all the ducks we have to get in a row, and there's no point spending all the time on it unless town meeting said we can do it. So, right. yeah. This is the agreement in principle, basically, to move forward. Yeah. Yes. And that we'll have to make a promise in a, in a special town meeting that we'll bring it down and we'll present it to the town again in terms of the program. Can... Well, that's the select board no. that's deciding. You don't want to do that? No. <laughs> All right. We don't have to. We <laughs> don't have to, but I think mean, people might say, well, we want to know what's the dollar. Or... Well, we can certainly can advertise it. Being a conversation. Once the select board has made the decisions, we can certainly do put it in the currents and do everything we can to advertise it. I mean, without delving too much into the technical minutiae of the overlays, and we'll start moving these But I think we can give people a general dollar number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, you know, of course, it is revenue that does not come to the town. It's reducing that individual's tax bill. Yeah. So, you always want to be aware of that. We have the, the, the overlay to offset it. Yeah. You know, it will impact our ability to get any type of other kinds of funding, like Chapter 70 or 90 or anything, forms is strictly. And in town agreement. Yeah, chapter 90, which has been flat for how many years? 12 years. Mm -hmm. right. But again, I'm interested in researching with Lee's help other towns and getting yeah. their the benefit of their experience and how they've sure. set it up. Yes. Yeah. Well, I can imagine a lot like our clerk's office, certain election years, something balanced, not ballot box. I'm the long time to say the number. Oh, the number of correspondence that yeah. the town clerk has the amount of correspondence yeah. in an election year even now the number of requests for voters lists 
this is uh, registered voters in the whole town. The number of requests for that already has been very surprising. Um, and the, yeah, so, uh, when I saw when I saw how few towns in this state have yet to adopt this to adopt this program, I was shocked. I think we're, there's just a couple. Of, there's just a handful. Well, we we've, we've run it around a couple of times in the past and sent out an inquiry to the different departments. And you know, fifteen years ago, say um, the department has weren't the same folks they are now. But at any rate, I mean, the highway department said, "What can we have somebody do?" <laughs> you know, considering safety and OSHA and oh, yeah. and liability and so on and so forth. And that's a question right there. Um, and the, the collector, anyone handling finances, anyone who has any sort of uh, privileged information that you know should not be made public and things like this, all of these are questions. And the, they need to be answered and settled and a means of protecting that established data time. Well, they're an employee of the town, too. Yes, they are. So they have to go to the necessary. Uh... You have to go through the ethics. Training. Yeah. Yep, right. the ethics ethics test. Yeah. The ethics test. They don't let you fail anymore. Oh, you can't fail those yeah. anymore. You can't you yeah. can't turn the computer off. Even That's right. Until there you will, pass it. There will be an expense for that to do extra time and Yes. And that's one thing we'll find out from other towns. Yeah. In the initial fair. year or two, it's going to be higher. Yes. But once it settles in. Uh, does it turn out to be a really good balance for them? No. Okay. Anything else for the assessors? I don't think so. All right. Okay. We'll say thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going around. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Hi, Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, warrants. The accounts payable warrant, the amount of $90,415.38. Payroll warrant, the amount of $133,277.43. And the payroll deduction warrant, in the amount of $33,113.39. Which items within that were the ones that you wanted to call our attention to in your Town and Minister report, Ministry report. I don't remember what you call attention to any Yes, we did. We did. There is a reference to something in the warrants. Oh, no, it's just, it wasn't, I just mentioned that the Stockman contract. So one of the things um, was is was in the warrant this week. So one of the things I wanted to point out is that Mike has been wonderful in including in here somewhere there was detail. Oh, maybe it was in the one that was mailed to us, where he set up. He has it. It's not in here. He has it set up in the deficit fund, so you can see specifically at the end here the highway emergency expenses, and there's the Stockman contract. So this is the line for our deficit spending. Right. So, yeah. So we were anticipating a total of like 7,000 for that, something. 7,000, no. no, I don't think she. There was Stockman and then there was uh, um, Pantomo. Oh, oh, yes, we haven't gotten to the yet. Stockman was the the trout walker, the turtle, the, the turtle sweeper. Yes, and that Emily was Stockman, yes. and that estimate was fifteen hundred dollars. The amount bill was nineteen hundred. Uh, sixteen ninety five. I think it was. Good gig if you could get it. Yeah, wrong business for the wrong business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I walked that that river in five minutes. That that, that stretch of river in five minutes. How many turtles did you see? 
I don't know. I just don't know. What's that? See, with the cars, keep you the car. Yeah. So, we um, have a motion for the warrants. A uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings attended by select board members. Uh, I did a capital improvement meeting. I met with Veronique and Gobi and Adrian yes. um, to discuss the formulas used for grant applications and financial assistance. I'm sure you can guess our the response to it was a no response. Um, and I met with town council today to overview the shade tree law, which we can talk about later on the town warrant. We're going to have more discussions on that to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, legal and that we're not putting um, any undue burden on the town with the bylaw. So why? What's the town council's? Why do we want a shade tree? What? What's? What? What does the existing state law not do that the bylaw does do? What does the existing state law do that the bylaw doesn't do? What the or law, vice versa? Like why? The state do we, law is very broad. It doesn't say anything about whose responsibility is what, or if there's charges for certain things, or if there's fines or fees. It says none of that. So this. This bylaw that I was an amalgamation of multiple town bylaws in Western Mass. Uh, I made sure to include what the town's responsible for and what it's not. And if anybody goes outside of those responsibilities, that they can be fined for it. Because one school of thought is that in the absence of specificity that would be contained in a bylaw, the select board as the here, the trier of fact um, in these hearings has greater discretion to assess things to determine, you know, to make decisions. When when you create more regulation, then the amount of discretion decreases. I think it's more for a footprint for, for the highway department to know what they need to look for and what they don't. Because he's looking for direction. I get what you're saying, but I think Ron's looking for direction. This is hopefully going to provide that. Here's your responsibility. This is not your responsibility. Um, yeah. And what's the vote required for a bylaw? No, just, just a simple majority, to the best of my yes. recollection. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's got a better chance in the special town meeting than, than the June meeting. The June meeting, I'd bet against it. But um, yeah. uh, and even so, this the concept is not popular so far in this town. Um, uh, yeah. All right, so we can talk about that. Um, just had a few questions off the top of my head. Sorry. Um, Erica, been any meetings? <laughs> um, I no, not since um, the town, whatever the town luncheon, but that was two weeks ago. Yeah, I'm yeah. still adjusting to time change. <laughs> yeah, I can't even remember what how many meetings I went to. Um, uh, all right, any public comments? No, um, <laughs> good. Um, yeah, um, that was common. All right. So, since um, since our esteemed colleague from the finance committee is here, uh, Alan, is there anything that you if you just want to talk about the warrant in general? Some of the. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Article Three, I think, what would be really helpful. To uh, I, we, I think the finance committee would probably be in favor of authorizing the need to borrow that as much as And I think what's going to be helpful is a uh, 
Maybe the capital improvements committee, maybe the finance committee could work with Ron remember to like all this would be a timeline. In terms of the amount of when the work has to be done, obviously it's been all going to be done within the next six months, so as much people like to be. And maybe also a ranking of projects, since everyone wants to hear some first. We want this to become a great session in town meeting about you know, how bad things are going to be and how it's involved involves significant, but we want to make time to make use of that. And there may be comments from Jan in terms of how, how we're managing so far by way of using our, our, our reserves, not stabilization for them. Uh, I, can, I can tell you that since we did meet today that she has not yet touched the stabilization funds. Good. So, and Ron gave us the estimate of by the end of December 31st, 519,000. Which includes the reclamation jobs that are happening right now, started today. Um, as far as where the 1.5 million came from, I'll be honest, it, it isn't a um, a firm number. Yeah, we got to discuss that back in August. So right, and so the main concern was just to make sure that we were allowed to borrow enough to get us through until annual town meeting, or preferably. Take this off the warrant because the state came through with the funding before yeah. December 9th. Um, so it's really just more of a placeholder. Yeah. And and you know, hoping giving so it would basically give Jan the authority to cover our expenses if needed to borrow. Understood. Thank you. Are we closing the warrant tonight? I'm sorry? Are, are we closing the warrant tonight? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Good, because like there's still like a lot of unknowns. That... Not to the 20th, probably. Yeah, the 20th. Goes the press well, you're not, but... There's a difference between closing it and voting it out. Closing it would just be yeah. saying you're not accepting any more articles. Yeah. Right. So, that's true. Yeah. That's true. That might happen tonight. <laughs> that's probably a good idea. Um, but the, um, the, the thing about it is that on that list so far, so there, there's been a report, I don't know if you've all seen the report from the Burkhog engineers about the Upper Baptist Hill Road. Did, did, was that sent to everybody? Yeah, I thought I sent it. I thought, I thought you did too. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that, that identified drainage work on that road that um, certainly has the potential, you know, the, uh, uh, of the, I know when, when you looked at the map in that thing, there was a corner of that map that had eight homes. Six of them had serious flooding, and those were like the six worst flood situation. And all of them would be helped tremendously um, by that, by the drainage work that, just on that road. Um, and it didn't look like it was anything that super expensive that just creating the ditch on the one side and uh, oh my no I think no, it's very expensive maybe it is plus but, we would need engineering ahead of just and, and so so that's one of but but um that's one of the things that I'd really like to just burrow into before um this article before the ink dries from this article to see what we can do about this because that is something that um, you know, if that's not a priority, then what are we doing? I, uh, I don't know. Um, that that's that that is a town that that is a town road that desperately needs to be repaired. Well, I think the issue of repair and then also upgrade that sounds like more repair than upgrade. Too. Well, well, the, the road the road is um. You know, you need a kidney belt right now yeah. to, to travel that oh, road. Yeah. But but the the plan called for just the ditch, just like they created on one sixteen, the, the ditch on the one side, just on the on the one side that would, and it just tra channeled the water into the um, a couple of designated locations that you know. But it it should there should be some modicum of engineering first, but. Um, you know that we know more flooding is coming, and we know we know who's going to get hurt by it. 
and we just yeah, my question would be give me hope what I'm I'm not I don't know if people want to fixate on the dollar or not right now. We can use 1.5 million if in US realistically it could be in terms of money. Well be helpful would be how the process and how we're going to go by evaluating projects and the costs and the things. Well, I literally found out today. That Mass DOT, thank you, Mass DOT, has let us know that they are done with their work in town. So now, right? Well, I mean, they've been amazing. They've yeah. done, oh, yeah, they, they've done everything and more. Half million dollars. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, the next step, I think, would be to sit down with Ron and go through. We go through our initial damage assessments, saying, "Okay, well, DOT took care of this." And kind of redo the list for us. Um, I mean, there's basically here's like chasm along the sides of roads. What uh, okay. we meant to plow from getting heavy red stone come in at three o'clock in the morning, just coming right there in the snow and pull it out. And then this thing, like, unfortunately, mm -hmm. people in home that came from the screen day. And then that speaks to a larger project too that may have, not happen between now and April 1st. I was not given any indication that because originally I had put two million in there just as a right. guess, and I was told one point five should cover it. Oh, it's was just a recommendation. No, it wasn't you. Uh, <laughs> Somebody else. Somebody else came up with the same number. Yes. Wow, that was that was my number too. I know. So I went with your yeah. number. All right. <laughs> um, yes, I think, and I think you're both right. You know. I'll be honest with you. I'm truly hoping that something comes through from the state, and this makes this I unnecessary. Think it will, but it could be seven years. <laughs> I don't know. No, that I, I, that. I've received indications that you know that because because thank goodness Leminster and whatever the town next to it got wiped out, that they they're going to get money, and because they are, they're going to throw us a few shekels too, and um, that's just you know. But if, if they if they weren't waiting in line, we wouldn't be getting anything. But because they are, it's just easier just to shut us up and give us something. And that's what's going to happen. But um, uh, you know the the thing about that plan. So yeah, and I I do not want to just go by the IDA because the IDA did not does not include the recommendations of the Verkhog engineer. No, I understand. And, I, I'm just saying. And, Things and, need to be reassessed, and that that you know that at some point, you know, we we have to make sure that the same residences don't just get wiped out over and over again, mm -hmm. and that that repair to that road and that drainage to that road is going to do a huge amount towards making sure that doesn't happen, and so that has to be a greater priority than just a road. So that's not any old road. Dealing with modern climate. Reality. Well, there it part of it too is that the existing system is all clogged up. It, if the existing storm drainage system on that road and that has already been built, if it was functional, um, then that would be one thing. But it is not functional, and so so it's a repair of existing. It's a repair and expansion and improvement on an existing system. Um, it's not like creating something completely new. So the, the first recommendation in that report, and just for folks at home, there was a there was um, the FERCOG, a couple of their engineers went out and looked at the Pine Hill area, Pine Hill, Upper Baptist and Baptist Hill, and made some recommendations to us. And the first one was to get the dye tests from DOT. So that was the first thing I did when that came in was recommend, or sorry, not request from um, DOT that you know, what do, I, what do I need to do to kind of move that forward and see if we can get, because we don't really know what we're dealing with until we have to know where the water's going. Um, and then I would say we really truly need some engineering um, of some sort. And you can't do, if you fix all of Upper Baptist the way they were talking, all the water's going to flow to the Triangle and Pine Hill, which is just going to 
flood other people's, you know, right. so you the, need to do the, it. The as recommendation, a whole. though, was that that be excavated out and scooped out. And, I understand that, and, and but so that could also to find out where the water's going and if the pipe is crushed. Right. So you couldn't, you have to, you have to deal with the triangle before you deal with upper Baptist. And so but, I, I think we need some more professional help in that, I guess is what and, I'm saying. But the the report also indicated that they believe a lot of that could be done by the town public, you know, mm -hmm. by, by the town. Yeah, Ron well, is, yes. Ron is, that's like stuff that runs. Well, we don't know it. how much it's going to cost yet either. And we need to make sure that it's, yeah. and you know, so, and that's another thing we may be able to, you know, if we get some more um, grant money, maybe, maybe if we do the engineering, we could get some grants to fix that. I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't had a time to. So the, I have a question regarding the state. State, what will the state pay and not pay for this? However, the state were to come in and say, well, you're doing work that's not repair, it's infrastructural upgrades, which obviously are needed, but they might say, well, that's not repair, that's different. You, you know, know I think the state goes by the in, um, initial damage assessment that we put forward. What will the state use as the quote unquote Bible? Is it the engineering report from the region county governments? Who would they defer to? So. No, no, because and 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 um, Megan and Ryan made sure to say that you know this was not an engineering stamp kind of thing. It was their assessment, not right. not something that you can build but it, from. But it was a lot more than just a back of the envelope kind of a right. thing, too. I mean, yeah. it was a serious report, right? And uh, well, a, a well done report, by yeah. the way. Um, very professional report. Um, so I have a question then, and that is. Would it be easier between if Ron could come up with the work we can do is the winter season now and a lot of work can't get done now? Seems like April first. But what it would cost to get repairs done, at least get four inch rock along the side of the road so the car can go off into the ditch and the school bus done. Now. I think that's what he's he's working on now, right now, trying so to get it. might be helpful if we agree to maybe a special town meeting or a smaller number. In the annual time meeting, we have more engineering reports to go go for the large number. What do you think? I think I think um that's why if, 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 if there's one thing, you know, we, we get heavy spring rains every year. And um you know, if if there's one thing that we can do before the rain, you know, that the you know, April, May rainy season, it should be that. Drainage that storm, the repair of that stormwater drainage system on that road, um, just because that is, you know, of, of the homes that, of the nine homes that lost a lot of stuff, eight of them are right there, like, and and it's and that just that road fixed is gonna alleviate a lot of possible harm. And so and that would require an engineering survey and a lot of people have to go but, yeah, bigger. But possibly, but one of the you know, we there are one of the things that we learned when the, that um when the one resident had the lawyer that came um was you know the one resident has an engineer friend that does this and might be willing to help. That's that's exactly what we should be that like. You know, convening, ha having a meeting of that whole group, uh, offering a meeting of those 20 residents that are affected by this and saying, this is what we need right now. You know, time to step up, time to call your friends and see what we can do. Would you agree with that, Bernie? I don't think that's going to happen before this special town, town, special town meeting. Why not? So, I can't. Why not? <laughs> I, just want to see this, I don't want to see this get tabled either, which I can envision happening. They were really screwed. Yeah. But then what? You know, I kind of like to go for low hanging fruit that people just can't say no to. And then in, in, in June, we'll you know, get real and obviously a higher number. And then there's also a process to amend the IDA at some point. And I don't know, you know, I know at for MEMA, it wouldn't have mattered, but maybe for the state appropriations process, it would be permissible. It's a separate set of rules. I, I think the legislator gets to make their own rules. Um, but I think we're going to be just be getting crumbs on the from the table anyway, you know, pennies on the dollar. But um, because there was a whole lot of numbers that that IDA did not include.
So if Ron could come up with uh, like basic repairs and something that we have to cut concrete for the uh, special comedy, I mean, the finance committee might be inclined to vote for 1.5 million, but if someone in town put on the board of the special town meeting as well, and I'll allow to have a discussion and get it rewritten, I want to have an amount that's at least going to cover what Ron can do between now and like now and next year. Well, that's that's right. Plan B. In other words. in other words, I took what what he'd done so far is half a million, a little more than half a million for six months, doubled it and added on a 50% as a buffer. I just, yeah. honestly, okay. that's, you know, because we don't know what's going to happen yeah. between now. And, 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 and again, there's so much unknown. Do we, you know, are, will we be getting money from the state? And I just wanted to make sure we, we had enough if we needed to borrow it to get us through to the end of the town meeting. And you know, push comes to shove, worse things worse, we could also call another special town meeting. Yeah. You know? Maybe. Not that I would yeah. want to. Yeah, <laughs> that is not a popular. Yeah. No, it's not. I'm and I, I agree with you. That's one of the other reasons I wanted to make sure we made it through the lane of town meeting. Yeah, I, I'm looking at this like a, no, I wouldn't say revolving fund, like a line of credit. We're not going to get it up from lean and half right away. It's going to be. And increments that we can use to put down the state out of the own sales program or finance between now and whenever. It's a short term mode, it's a one year. <clears throat> and then you can renew it. Yeah. Because that's how the own sale program works. And that is the blessing of that is that the first, I don't know how many years are interest payments only. Yeah. So, like, that's. Which the state won't reverse. Yeah, um, but you know, if there's if there's anything that I would wish for is that we that that oh yeah that, that is that the upper Baptist Hill thing um, just to it, it go, like shoots up the list of priorities to like top yeah um, you know it, it just, just like it, it's the same thing about how when the, the when the, the rent when the waters were flowing the top the the top priority was getting people access to their homes like that's that that was the top priority in road repair at that time and this is similar to that now it's the top priority in road repair is allowing people to keep their homes yeah um, that's just we don't want to be wrong especially time here to get grilled again. So my thought is for Ron, maybe he wants to offer comment on what criteria of projects are going to get ranked and how much I'm Because people are going to ask that because people are people up what they do and but have to be discussed. At the, at the, the same comments. thing, these are Ron can give his recommendation, but I'm not, you know, these are this is a policy decision. This is a select board decision. And it's just not it's not okay just to and the select for the select board to just default their um, decision making responsibility to the to anybody to anybody. Yeah. Um, I mean, realistically, what can be done between now and November one? A lot of this kind of work usually is shut down. But the, and like so so far, you know, when 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 the select board agreed to um, create the policy the allowing for deficit spending the the policy that we created was that um all expenses be approved in advance the pop that 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 actually occurred exactly once um still to this day that we're still getting the first knowledge of um uh, of deficit spending is in the warrants after it's already been spent and that is not the policy that we enacted and so going forward, like we can't do this anymore. Like it's the select board, th these are policies, which roads, these are policies. And this is the select board's responsibility to determine this and um, not the highway departments. Man, the fact that we're doing is agreeing to do future deficit spending. Yeah. Which is no way. That's the biggest conflict that people understand that it has to be. 
And it's based on guesstimates, right? You don't know what you mean. And, you know, the majority of the work, like you said, a lot of the work gets shut down um, with the winter, but that really has a lot more to do. I mean, God willing, we don't have ice on the roads for four months um, with the fact that you can't get hot patch after a certain date. So, but those roads are all finished now. So now it's a matter of adding in the gravel and grading. Yeah. Um, so yeah. um, that work, as long as the weather holds, will be added, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Because there's still quite a few roads that are still, like you said, the ditches on the side. And, oh, yeah. you know, so that that's the first priority, I, you know, is to make sure people have safe travel and, and that the roads are able to be plowed so people can get them. Um, the school buses and back in right. school buses and then the post office and everything yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think you know the select board you know, understand by the supervisor who we work collaboratively and then yes, I agree. Collaboratively, that which is not what's been taking place. Yeah. So in terms of uh you know, special town meeting on December 9th, uh, November 20th, uh, joint select board meeting on finance committee. What might be helpful for presentation would be, uh, I could have maybe some idea of the project, what the priorities are, and what, what dollar amounts we're thinking of between now and April 1, and hopefully April 1, we'll have greater insight from the state of what that might give us. But April one, the state the check from the state should have cleared. <laughs> um, and if it doesn't, Amen. It, you know, because because they're taking their vote before then. Yeah. Um. So. I mean, by April one, we'll have the special cherry sheets already out of the state and all that. Yeah. 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 Luck, luck, luckily, luckily, Leminster needs money. So we're going to get a few pennies. See. See. Any Thank others? You. Any others? That's the question. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so while you're here, you know, we talked about the twentieth as the 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 problem. You know, not the problem, but in the unlikely event that while we're all together. We need more information on a given article, or we desire questions to be answered. The problem is that the twenty-first is the drop-dead thing, and and so if we do it the twentieth. There's not going to be really an opportunity to get more information on that spot. So if we do it a couple of days ahead before then, yeah. Um, then so I don't know what your committee's availability is, but. The well, thought occurred to me that have, we, if we have to meet on a Friday or a Saturday or something, then so be it. I mean, this is emergency stuff. Yeah. We're in a crisis. So, I mean, to, to me, it made more sense to do it like instead of that Monday, the 20th, the, the Thursday prior to that or something like that. Um, in that way, if we, the 16th, in that way, if we need to, we can post the meeting for the 20th on the 17th, if we need to have a subsequent meeting after the 16th, right? Well, you're going to need to meet on the 20th anyway to approve the warrant. Correct. Yeah. So, Correct. So, does that make sense to you? Meeting on the 16th is, I mean, if that's possible, and want absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Is that all right with you, Erica? Um, I believe so. Let me. Yeah, I had it in my phone that we would potentially have a meeting on the 13th that Monday. Then we probably even is that even better. Thirteen. I can't Monday. promise I'll be here. You can certainly meet without me, but I I'm driving back and that's why I took the day off. <laughs> so. I have the thirteenth on my calendar, but I can do the sixteenth instead. I can do either, or the fourteenth or the fifteenth. Yeah, I'm open all that week. Yeah. Well, I can do the fourteenth, not the fifteenth. Historical talk. Oh. With um, Howard Boyd and Bill Burnett. And Erica just said she could not do the 15th. I can, yeah, I can't do the 15th, but I can do the 14th or the 16th.
Or although if the 15th is, is the best for everyone, I can, I can make that work. I can, I can rearrange some stuff if I need to. What time do they need? Uh, usually seven. Is it three o'clock? The planning board is the 16th. Yeah, um, open space planning board. 16th. Anything for the school committee? They usually don't post in the town calendar, despite the many requests that they do. <laughs> Somebody got to do something. Somebody got to school. Yeah, the 16th, I don't know where it would be. Is there nothing in the back office? There's the two meetings that are simultaneous for once here. Oh, so right, the 16th. So then, so then the 15th, Wednesday the 15th, that's the day Eric can't do it. Well, she just said. Well, I can I can rearrange stuff if I have to. If that's if that's the best date for everyone, I can do that. What about the fourteenth at like five thirty? Does five thirty work? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, conservation on that day, so we can get over there. There's nothing on the seventeenth. You could do the fourteenth, right, Erica? I, yeah, I can do the fourteenth, but if if the fifteenth works, if, if that's best for everyone, I can I, I can reschedule what I have that. That day, the fourteenth at five thirty in the back room, the town offices. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, that's a good idea. I, I like that. I'm sorry. What time did you say? Five thirty. Five thirty. You know, maybe uh, I could be there. Some yeah. Feedback. Okay, absolutely. So the earlier time probably better for him, too. You know, maybe Jan, he was not available. Maybe he's so available. That's a good idea, too. Yeah. Okay. Talking about the mechanic there. You know, yeah. Is great. this a joint meeting, then? Yes. So yes. I will post that as joint? Okay. Yes, okay, 14th, 530? Yes. Turn off. Discussion and possible vote. Uh, Article four in particular. Yeah. The granddaddy of it. Oh, it's new, re, redone. I think you mean Article three. Yeah. Article three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. All right. That's progress. No, that's progress. That's, that's absolutely. No, 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 no. Those are like my major goals for tonight, actually. Yeah, that makes me feel very sick. Yeah. If we want to continue the discussion, I'm good with removing Article 10. If we feel it's not necessary, I, I just wanted to have something in place just in case. But if we don't want to go forward with putting that oh. in, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, oh no, it's not a discussion. I don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I I I, I, just, I just know that it's going to be. Yeah, if if the object is to have a non-controversy, no controversies at the town meeting, then don't <laughs> add to the controversy. <laughs> like then yeah. state tree bylaw. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I we can remove it. I just wanted something in place just in case it was necessary. And okay. I thought that I thought Ron was looking for some direction and that this would help. But if we tell Ron the direction is to follow the general law, general mass law, then that's the direction. And you can always bring it up again at Anderson. Yeah, exactly. So I can just call down. I mean, you know, I I respect the amount of work that's been done on it, though, and like I don't, I I I haven't studied it in depth and compared it versus the state law, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I just just as a just a general concept, the more specificity in the regulation, the less discretion in the trial to the yeah. trier of fact, yeah, and the less flexibility. Right. to fashion a remedy that could potentially right so let's just table it and i'll talk to donna and just tell her the same okay. we're going to table it i would i would recommend that we table the next part for the book yeah thank yeah. you so much Alan. Yeah. it's there's no point there sorry it's, take the big box thank you <laughs> thank you thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so while we're on new business, let's just finish new business out. Um, the extended producer responsibility resolution. 
Germany. Yes, you all signed this in 2021. There's new bills there. Um, basically, for those at home, the idea behind this is that extended producer responsibility means that a company needs to um, make sure that the product is recyclable, packaging that's used is minimal and recyclable. Um, and it's a way to make sure that the town has less trash to deal with. So it's just a good thing to support. And because these are new bills, I figured you all signed it before. So it's uh, the pending legislation they're talking about is S-471, which is printed paper and packaging. H-823 and slash Senate 551 and Senate 542, which are about paint, and then H-81 and H-916 slash Senate um, 513 for mattresses. And again, it's all about trying to reduce the amount of trash that we end up having to pay for. <laughs> it's funny, it's those three things and nothing in there about plastics. It's also it's just you know the, the the whole concept. Everything that we do started off in the '70s with the reduce, reuse, and recycle. And all we do is focus on recycle, mm -hmm. and that's the least effect of those three prongs. That is the least potential to be actually creating solutions for the problems that we're trying to get to. Reuse and reuse, or you know, re reuse and reduce, have the potential to do so much more good than recycling. <laughs> But we, nobody focuses on that. That being the case, we signed this before. I'm okay with signing it again. It looked reasonable to me. It yeah. still is reasonable. I'm definitely good with signing. I just wish it included more. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so this one just, um, that's how they wanted it this time. Last time they let you sign it each. Now they want eight eyes. Is that an official sign? Yeah. There you go. Is that an official second? Yes. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. For us. Who's here before us? We'll never know this. There are nails everywhere. Oh, oh they must have the foot here. It was, it was oh, a foot clinic. Uh, I got that table one time. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god, I got that table one time. I, I, uh, uh, I just picked something up. I'm like, what is this yellow thing? Uh, 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 that's that's the <laughs> I can see I can see if they'll do my job when it comes to nails. He just bites me when I try to He bites everybody. <laughs> um all right. The Oh, <laughs> I don't think there's enough in here. <laughs> um, all right, so the, the last item in the new new um, business is the discuss the discharge of the Community and Economic Development Committee for town bylaw. Um, I think that this committee might be defunct, but it might just be asleep too. Um, so what I what my uh, I'm okay sort of doing this. What I would like to do is just sort of do this with a sun. What's the opposite of a sunset provision? A sunrise provision um, that you know that vote to do it, but it, it'll take place in thirty days if we don't hear from you. Something like that. Okay, I, I have reached out and I did say it, I, the I know. vote was tonight. I know the weird thing back. is that they live right next door, and I so know. it's just um, yeah. You know, I'm just trying to be. I agree with you. We'll have a sunrise clause. A sunrise clause. 
um, of 30 days. Is that okay? Whatever, whatever. It, it just takes place automatically that we don't, if, if they don't contact us, but that, okay. that um, you know, that it, and it gets mail as well as email. Okay. Is that a motion, Phil? Are you going to? Uh, the, the reason being is that the, the especially the chair, like got the, has the potential to be really useful to this town in other committees, et cetera, et cetera. And I just want this to be a good experience. <laughs> I, I want the dissolution of the committee to be a good experience. I don't too. think it's a. I know. I know. Yeah. Um, so every, you know, and actually the other people in that committee too. They're, so it's just. This yeah, one, so yeah. 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 Which I think okay. is only three people. So um, the motion there would be to. Discharge, discharge the Community and Economic Development Committee within 30 days of today. Um, if we do not hear from them, to the contrary, that they wish to continue in existence. Um, if they do wish to continue in existence, then they are not discharged. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the the, the 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 flood stuff we've talked a little bit about or quite a bit about already. Um, did did you want to vote to close the warrant tonight? Because that was the other part of the warrant on the agenda. I just didn't know if you wanted to leave it open until the whatever day we just said. Um, to you. close the warrant to new submissions. Correct. That's yeah, and there is. might be some changes to. Oh, absolutely. Some, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm going to move to move to close the warrant for special town meeting to new submissions effective tonight. Second. 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 Oh, oh, bye. Oh. <laughs> so the, we, we talked quite a bit about this. I think um, since we have that report that came out and there is new information. Um, I would like to keep to uh, schedule a meeting for that group of people to say this is what we need. Going, we need an engineer. Um, this is our our next steps, and just to uh, just to create the you know to, to facilitate the community of twenty residents, twenty homes that have a. Very personal stake in this, mm -hmm. and um, it's just we, we have we have new information to share. Steps. So, are you okay with that? Do you want us to take part on that? Are you okay doing that? Yeah, I have no problem doing that. I mean, everybody's gotten a report. I've gotten some files back. So, I mean, I could just send out an email from now and say. Does anybody know an engineer? If that's what you're asking for. Yeah, so, because um, otherwise we're talking about money, and then you have to figure out where that money's coming. From. I think I'd like to do that in person. So we'll find a day and time we can hear. The other thing that we talked about was that uh, the in terms of uh, the order of roads to being done once once these are set up that that, that we, we do that collaboratively with with the highway department. Do you want to you want to motion that or are you okay with that? No, I've already got it on my list of things that we talked about that. Um, and what else was there? About, oh about which about the, the flood? The, yeah 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 about things flood floody the floody stuff. Um well if you want to talk about the weather yeah, okay. So what is the purpose of this letter? No, this it, November the, the yeah. November sixth. So I have gotten a couple of requests from people 
just for background information, what does karma mean? Um, and so it seemed to me that writing something that just states the facts of what has happened, basically the biggest need facing the town is needing the money to cover all these repairs. And then I added something at the bottom. Erica, you, you got this right. You know, I you did. Know. Yeah, I saw it. And I have to say, you guys are all kind of underwater again, which is fine. I'm like reading lips and I'm following along. But if if I'm not immediately responsive, it's because I haven't totally processed what it is I'm hearing. But no, I did. I got that letter and I thought it was great. So the, the very bottom of it, I had added in two things because, again, this is kind of like a generic letter that if the select board approved and somebody asked for information, and this is timely, I could just email this out and say, this is what the select board. So on the bottom, it said we would ask for two things. One, to help make our town whole <laughs> by giving yeah. us this. And two, to provide me with the funds so that if this happens again, there's no FEMA declaration, that MEMA could actually still help towns that are in our situation. So. Yeah, I mean, um, my, the, my only note to the, the, the 3.9 million understates the our actual it, because it did not include it did not include swimming pool did not include natural roots did not so it did include something it, it, did, it didn't it didn't include private right i mean that was the or or did this include private damages as well followed up i can't remember okay but there was a place for certain damages i don't believe natural roots was on there right um I thought there was there was something else. But but I'd have to have an actual something that you could fall back on and say, I mean, we can't pull something out of the air if we don't know what the number is. So to me, this was a good representation because it was our ideas. It might be a representation of what our actual receipts are or something like that, or what our actual ability to prove is right now, but we know it still understates the actual amount of money that we need. Well, as a community, all told. Right. I, I mean, I still think it's important to separate. I mean, I just I know there's a lot of damage to private property, but I but I also know that there's. I, I, I think we need to make the distinction between like what the town really needs to pay for to continue functioning as a town, as opposed to what we would love to pay for if it was possible for us to compensate private businesses and private residences whose insurance didn't cover, you know, the damage that they had. I just, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's what I hear. From, we all hear different things for people in town, but I, I just, I think it's make, I think it's important to make that distinction that there's, there's stuff that like, you know, we have to pay for the roads. We have to pay for drainage. There's, I mean, there, there's things that like as a town we have to do. And then there are private residents private you know business that technically is not actually our responsibility right and there is so that is one of the things and it, um you know it, there is you know it we we were not we are as a town we are not going to be able to just cut a check to private residences right um, we can't hold but, much they would like to but there are you know one one of the the statements that has been put out there in our public discourse is that no town money can go towards private aid, and um and it's more nuanced than that. And you know there there is an anti aid amendment in our state constitution that says pretty much that, but there's also a whole body of case law that has carved out exceptions. And um, that and, and those exceptions, the, it's a public purpose exception, and so that is why it is okay. You know, is it, it is legal for the towns for towns to, uh, you know, pay money to do work on town on private landowners sewer hookups so that to create a sewer system. It's um, under that same thing. It would be legal to do work on town private property to do stormwater drainage on under that same thing. But it that's separate from cutting a check to the residences for 
you know, but but there is, you know, and and I did speak with the town with our town council about this, and she did confide that the that whole section of case law that the public purpose exception she's not real familiar with, and she would have to study up on. Um, but we this comes across every year. We we deal with these issues every year with CPA funding, you know, and and it's the towns can you know our town you know gave money to the church which is perfectly legal um for rebuilding the church we gave a hundred thousand dollars to them um because the public purpose of uh, a public dining room and a public kitchen was more than enough to satisfy and there's all kinds of case law that said that they ended up they ended up deciding to return that money which was think they should not have done but um but um and and it's the same thing they get the, the town gave money to the historical society which is a private organization for the museum um because it's a museum that has a public purpose so there there's all kinds of exceptions to the no private no town money to for the benefit of private residences but um but that certainly actually cutting a check to the private residences to compensate them for damages certainly crosses that line in my opinion but right. um but the, it, it's a whole it is that that is a nuanced thing um so i guess the purpose of the letter you know 3.9 i've got nothing else to base putting a number in there i mean if you want to right just a sentence that would say that 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 number underestimates our actual you know, understates understates our actual losses as a community. Okay, so then we wouldn't be able to sign this tonight. No, well. <laughs> well, I'm not there anyway. I can't sign this until Friday. <laughs> oh, right. That's true. We don't have an electronic signature, right? No. I I mean, I had I've I've sent it to you like a just, you know. My whatever a picture of my signature It's not in this meeting. Um, Wait, we can hear you. We can hear her. She just can't hear you. Oh, no, you just. Oh. Y'all came back for a second. Gosh. Okay, check your. Uh, well, so they wanted to move to sign the letter. As is. As is. No, we're going again. Check your phone. This is. Hang on a second. Is, okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm hearing there was a motion to sign the letter. Okay. I second the motion. Sorry. Sorry, I was just Sorry for... <laughs> <laughs> yes, what Chris is holding up. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, the next next step is smoke signals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be back on Friday. <laughs> An administrator update. Uh, you all have it. I don't have to read it. But... Right. Um, it gets posted. So, so the one thing that that you wrote to me that I thought was going to be in your update, but it wasn't, was the uh, communication with the school about. Oh, well, nothing's really happened. Okay. Um, I don't know if it will, so I'm just... Right. So, um, that didn't go over well. Yeah. Like, like, um, that's fine. And just, and I, the, so I, I got this, I got wondering, it's all the school. So, basically, all these years, whenever, whenever any other, it's never been Conway that it's done Whenever any other town, select board, town administrator in the other three towns has asked Darius to do something, to, to enact a new policy, it has been me that has been asked to call them and say, no, only the school committee does policy for the school. Only the school committee can tell Darius what to do. And no, um, it's can, not can ask Darius oh. um, that. that Everything else, you know, that and, and so, like, um, so you know, Darius was instructed by, I guess, the chair of the school committee not to do this, and because it did not come through proper channels, like, like, like a request of this nature has to get through. You know, only the school committee can hire, fire, set the work of the all that was asked was. An opinion about it. That's not a direction. Well, that's not a parent. I, I was told that it was asking teachers to add to their work. What? Okay. So what happened is I, I have, we've been doing the EOTS grant for two years. The number one way that hackers get into um, and do ransomware is through us. Is through our. So we've been doing it for two years. I want to sign the town up for the third year. And it occurred to me that the school is a huge part of this and has um, you know, a lot of people on so if they don't want to do it, that's fine. But I, you know, I didn't know if it seemed to me to make sense to see if we could get to try to get the grammar school on board. And so I was Basically, asking about it and what was thought, and I sent the. I only sent it. Said, "Look, this is what it is. Just go look at it." It was absolutely, absolutely no way. Well, it. On its face, it was. Uh, the, this, they got all that school committee. This new chair just started. Bob Holla, after fifteen years or whatever, he stepped down. Now it's. Is this frontier? Frontier and. Um, Lane still, but basically a request of this nature has to go through the school. Okay, that's great. Well, that's fine. It's taken care of. Then it's done and over with. <laughs> it so was just a suggestion. There on is my a, part so it, there is a school committee meeting, a frontier meeting tomorrow that I will be at. This will be part of Darius's report. Um, to some extent, I don't know to what extent, but um, he's, you know, so he gives a lengthy report about these resources that they generally touch in. So, what would you like me to do? Would you like me to make a motion to the school committee that, that he does this? No, no, this was exploratory. This was not in any way. Do this. This was I. I want to know if this is something that can be done. Give me some reasons why. You know, no. 
So he said, but send it to me anyway. So I sent him the application. That's all it was. <laughs> um, I just have a comment about um, town administrator's report. And I just want to note that there was a can you guys hear me? Because I'm, I'm okay. All right. Um, there was a reduction of almost 8.8 .8 tons of haulable trash in October, a 21% reduction. I just want to point that out for anyone who's watching that our pay per throw um, system seems to be one month in, at least in terms of haulage, is in my mind wildly successful. And that I was trying to I was trying to cost that out or benefit that out. Um, we haven't done that yet. But we just from last year the price per ton was one hundred and what, what is it one hundred and something per ton one hundred and ten per ton. So I it's gonna be one hundred ten. Yeah, it's gonna, so I, I think say, it's ninety eight right now. Yeah, or something like that. But, that sounds more like. But, you know, basically that was more than a thousand dollars in savings in one month. Basically, it was my back in the it was like a thousand dollar savings in the first month. And and that was only partial month. That was only three weeks of that month. Right, because it was we started into October. So is, and I agree that augurs well, and that is the information that we were looking for, that I was looking for. Um, I only saw two different locations where people had deposited trash on the road. Both of them were on the way to Deerfield, which I thought was very interesting. That that little pullout uh, on 116, the, the parking area on 116, very close to the Conway Deerfield border, um, accumulated several bags of trash. And I thought that that was very interesting that we might be accomplishing the twin objectives of ha not having as many Deerfield residents is if, if they threw their trash out right on the border. Um, I just thought that that would be like, where Deerfield residents, if they were going to throw the trash out that they were unable to dump in Conway, that that is where it would end up at. Do we know who, who picked it up? Because I don't, it's gone. Yeah, because I, I didn't see it. If I did, I might have called Chief Bates and said, let's run down and open it up and see whose trash it was. Yeah, the, <laughs> I saw it once. There was one bag. I saw it a couple days later. There was three bags. I saw it a couple days later and there were no bags. So I don't know that they were black, large trash bags. Contractors. And, and contractor bags, probably. Yeah. Um, and it had and, nothing to do with cleaning up DOT. No, um, that one of them had been cut open and or had been opened, and you could see the trash. It was the definitely household trash, also coffee, gr coffee, gr coffee it. grinds and whatnot. Um, so um, and then I, I had also heard that on uh on Matthews Road that there was a couple of bags that were deposited um, on Matthews Road, also on the way to Deerfield. But so it, it, this doesn't make any sense to me because the stickers are free. So why it, it's got to be some rumor that you have to pay for trash now. That's the only thing I can think of. Why? Otherwise, why would anybody? Especially in the first week. Be, when be you have that it because visitors, it's, stickers Deerfield are residents are unable to get. Yeah. Stickers, it now. doesn't make any sense. You're right, and yeah. if that is the only, yeah, that's what probably like, explanation. Yeah. And and I've been asking around, and that's that's the only place that anybody's seen trash. And I mean, that was one of the things that people were worried about is there's going an increase in roadside trash. Mm -hmm. But if the only place that takes place is on the way back and forth to Deerfield, then it's the price worth paying. So, um, that's my take on it. We'll go through and figure out what it is. <laughs> Um, and whoever picked up those bags, thank you. Yeah, but thank you for pointing that out. That was that was good. That was a very that, and, and thank you to Jan for com oh, yeah. compiling that information and to keep please keep doing that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, special town meeting Saturday, okay. December 9th. <laughs> I can't hold up my <laughs> um, so this is a mock-up for the signs to go up around town. Um, I figured less is more, but yep. I need help with the color. Color. What, what color signs do people want to see uh, around? I'll I'll work on that tomorrow morning. It'll, it'll be it's I'm four hours earlier, so it'll be very early in the morning. <laughs> the only thing at least my time. It'll be later in the day for you, but yeah, I can I can help you with that, Andy. Um, 
um, yes. we, we, we need to we need to really like promote that. Be, um, I just, just the number of people that took advantage of that in the June meeting. Mm -hmm. um, school is in session. The vacations haven't started. We're it's mm -hmm. we're likely to get, you know, we want to get those people. I did I did post it today on the website and sent out the email to the whole sixteen people who signed up for getting messages about town meeting. <laughs> so if anybody's watching and you want news from the town, you need to sign up for it and then we can send it to you. So I mean this this mock up Sunray is already like approved that you know said we can do this for the sign. So it was really just trying to figure out what color we wanted to do. You know. Is there any way that we can just that on some of those signs at least we can just have something that says free child care available call? Something like that. Nobody's gonna be able to read it when they're going by. And if it's not, mm -hmm. see the, the reason I wanted to do it this way is because you said if you if you if you lay it out so that the date and the time are right there, yeah, yeah. then the next one he'll just make stickers for us that we can change it. Right. So we can keep these year after year after year. So you know, and if we don't know if childcare is available every year, then that makes it you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we can we put it on the, the thing in front of town office? Yeah, we can do. And where else and where else are they? Uh transfer station. Yeah, we can do it over there too. Okay. That's right. a big benefit. It, yeah, no, it's it, huge. It, most towns don't do that. So okay, so no thoughts on color. <laughs> what color? Whatever color, I don't care. I'll need to leave that with Erica. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> Erica will decide. Yeah. yeah I'll, 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 <laughs> whatever color you decide, and I'm okay with you know lots of colors and rainbow colors. <laughs> rainbow. I could be Maria as well. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um, select board member comments, concerns, anybody? Do we want to follow up with the the town administrator evaluation meeting? Yes, I still haven't done mine. I've just had the, a crazy couple of weeks. Um, but, but, we, but yeah, we should do that. I mean, as a matter of like, we should do that. That's our job. <laughs> actually, we're kind of obligated to. Exactly. And we we've been not so diligent with that so well at this point do you want to wait until after town meeting because you've got yeah. you know frankly i don't think I it's mean, a huge rush i mean it's fine with me if you want to set up a whole other special meeting but you know we've got a lot of work in the next couple of weeks so you know the the other thing about it too is that you know when i, I had offered to the town administrator um that we could we could do it in executive session most towns do it in executive session even though you can make the argument that it doesn't squarely 100 percent fit within one of the categories for executive session it's still a polite thing to do and um and and it's there's something about this talking about someone's job performance in public that is just so unusual these days and it's just it, that's it's, the law yeah i know i know but i'd be okay it's still you know and i gave this option to, to ronnie it actually is you know the, the chair of the committee can set a meeting i'm not gonna i'm gonna do it the way she prefers um but you know I, i'm i just want to again say to you that i'm okay with doing this in executive session I think I think every every human being deserves like the respect that an executive session would include on it. Uh, just it's just an evaluation thing. It's nothing else. Um, and it's but you know it doesn't have to be in public. But it doesn't. It's. I understand what I know. What you're going to say I know you're right, but um, but but nonetheless, nonetheless, nonetheless. Maybe it forget what I was going to say. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't. <laughs> I would ask that it's after town meeting or a month away. All right. Yeah, I agree. All right. All right. No matter where the session takes place. Yeah, whether it's executive or, you know, it's, I mean, it, I'm, I'm, let, I'm letting you make the call. Like, uh, I'll schedule it, whichever, you know, I'll, yeah, I'll but that's fine. But, but, it, but the results are still public. Correct. But, there's a big difference. 
between having this conversation in private and having it in public. No, there's no one else in, in, in like that that has these things in public. No way. And it's just kind of. It's like asking, yeah. So we have said about that. Um, so we'll we'll schedule that later. Um, any, mail the Bardwell's Ferry DOT letter. So the what I was hoping that the letter would say is we'll pay for it. The letter said this is not. We're starting engineering work. We're starting work. We're, we're opening a file on it. Um, we have a number. We have a which number. Which is a very good start. But it also specifically says um, please note that the project review committee approval is not a commitment of state or federal funding to the project. So I'm sure that they have to say that. Yes. I really didn't like the word not in that sentence. <laughs> Um, um, I agree. I, I think this is a very, I agree with Eric. I think this is a very good, positive step in response to plea for help. All right. <laughs> We're on the docket. That's for you. Get acknowledged. Like they know this is an issue, not just for Conway, but for Shelburne Falls and everyone who wants to get to Posada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we are on the docket, but you know who else is on the docket? Every prisoner that's being led into the execution chamber. So just, you know, it's true. It's true. They got a docket too. So let's just hope we're on the docket to be paid for. So, um, yeah. So it's good. It's good. It's good, though. It's good. They got our letter, and this was the response instead of. Yeah. And it was a pretty quick response. It was. So, um, all right. Yeah. Anything else? Our next meeting is. Oh, we know. 14th at 5 5 30. Town offices back room. There's a joint meeting with the Finance Committee to vote on this. More articles. Yep, I just lost sound again. Then that motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, thank you, Erica. Hey, see y'all. <laughs>